I find it very strange how some people judge a country that treats its citizens terribly and pushes forth a draconian set of rules that it's purely the belief system's fault as to why those countries are that way. There are so many restrictive ways that can be pushed onto the public. Number of restrictive ways. And on this platform, many of us, including myself, are hypersensitive to when we see something similar to religion that has some of the trappings of religion that has, you know, it, it even has a kind of a dogma like religion starts coming into the forefront. And when we see something oppressive being done to people, we tend to have a bit of sympathy or empathy or sorrow or... And there are some people who have uh, Schadenfreude. 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 Towards the people in some of those countries. Instead of pity or remorse or empathy or sympathy. There's the people that say, well, anyone there gets what they deserve because they follow a fucked up belief system. Well, when you're in those countries, you're forced into at least pretending that you follow that belief system, or you die. A country can have a lot of Muslims in it. It, it can be, a, there can be a secular country and still be predominantly Muslim. There can certainly be Christian countries, and there are Christian countries that take Christianity to some of the same extremes that you see going on in much of the Middle East in relation to Islam. There's a handful of countries in Africa. If not full countries, there are regions within countries that have this sort of thing going on. Maybe I should uh, talk about that more. Maybe I should make videos constantly about those things. And then people are like, well, why are you focusing on those countries so much? to ask the same thing of, of some of the others who focus on a specific set of countries as well. Why focus that much on those countries? To me, a culture that we do not understand is not a culture we should be meddling in the affairs of. They have their thing going on, let's, you know, and the people that want to escape, let's help them. People that don't want to live in that kind of, of uh, uh, under that kind of rule, you know, let's, let's try to help them. Let's try to give humanitarian aid in some ways in, in that regard, but not do anything that directly affects uh, the government, nor go around trying to kill people who may or may not actually be the bad guys in contrast to what's going on in the rest of that country. Some of the people who try to argue that uh, almost all Muslims are bad. They would take the mindset of, well, it, just just keep blowing people up. It, it, it's, it's fine. They're, they're, they're in a mindset that makes them scum anyway. And there's some that, that I do, even if they hold that opinion, they at least hold the view also that uh, 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 they also hold the view that uh, we should leave those countries completely alone. So... But when people start taking a mindset in a country such as the United States, I can't speak for any of the other countries, and I and from what I've read and from what people have given me accounts of, and, you know, I, the general consensus is that, that Europe is going through very different things than the, the United States. So any anything that I'm talking about right now uh, probably doesn't apply to most of Europe because they're dealing with different things. So, 
but for, you know, somewhere like the United States to have an attitude that people who want to escape a terrible life, even if they're not being bombed, but they have the opportunity to get the hell out of, uh, out of that place so they can raise their kids in ways where they're, they're not constantly scared. Um, and we're going to turn them away because, well, you know, we're scared you, you might try to blow us up. It hasn't been refugees that have been, uh, causing uh, issues in this country. Again, Europe has a different set of things, and unless I have more information, uh, I, 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 I just don't have enough knowledge of a lot of what's going on culturally throughout Europe to give any sort of comments on that sort of thing. You know, I, 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 th again, the things that I read, it's like they are, they really do have a, uh, a for a lack of a better phrase, um, and this is really crude, but uh, they have a Muslim problem in Europe. They're having problems with a lot of the Muslims that are that are immigrating into the countries. Um, so, but that's what I seem to be reading. But I, I, there are things that you can read in any country that will say try to say definitively one way or the other that, oh, this group is a problem, or this group is a problem. And so, to... You know, I, 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 there are some things that I find on almost every source, and I at least have to take those things into consideration about what's happening there. So, I, you know, I wouldn't know where to begin, honestly on what to do about what's going on in Europe. Um, if people start having some answers over there, I will try to pick apart whether that seems like a good idea or not, but um, I, I can't speak for that. I don't... And these are just slight differences in... in uh, seemingly slight differences in cultures. Okay. Um, so when we, that's why I even say strong, more strongly, you know, in Middle Eastern countries, we don't, we, we, we don't know shit. We don't know shit about, uh, uh, any of the Asian countries. We don't know shit. When I say we, I'm saying as a general rule, people in the United States don't know shit about the way other countries live, the cultures of other countries. There are people that will spend a lot of time studying this, and they will go to some of these other countries, and they are the ones that really learn this stuff. They're the ones that really know. But we don't know shit. And when you... and, and, and just out of doing a little bit of studying of, of cultures and seeing how a totally different way of doing things still works. Because if it didn't work, they either wouldn't be alive or it wouldn't be a country, you know? It, 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 things work to at least a degree. Um, seeing a completely different way of something actually working. Um, it's, it's going to give you a different perspective. Now, I haven't been to any of these places. But, man, do I like to watch footage, raw footage from, from other countries. I love to watch that. I find, I, as much as I find, uh, I'm sorry to, to word it this way, but as much as I find a lot of Russian culture, it's quickly prone to violence. I'm sorry, it, the culture just, it's like, people are ready to get out of their cars and start fighting over something stupid. The way that people react and and the way that traffic happens. And I know I, I, this this has a lot to do with traffic, but 
let me tell you, um, it they, they the reactions are so different. And I've you see footage of shows, you see footage of the way that <laughs> that women are treated. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, even on uh, uh, I, I, game shows, talk shows. Shows that they'll show people partying. They'll show people. What, what do you? What kind of shows? What do you call those? Those things. I mean, it's like, like these these reality TV shows of people having a good time, right? Or they're just out on the town, or they're that sort of thing. These little little mini reality TV shows because it's not like it's not like a news broadcast. It's like, let's get in these people's lives. Let's do, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but, and they'll have these shows. And there's the body language, the way that people react to each other. There's, there's, there's just this immediate aggression thing. It's just like, you've, you've done this. It just, it's like, it's, like I've said, there are, there are some cultures that aren't necessarily, it doesn't have to do with the religion part of it, but there are just some cultures that have some sucky attributes. Now, this is not to say that Russian people don't care about other people, because they, that, now that's one thing that they have, like, when they care about someone, they show it in almost every way that they can. It, it, it's, it's like, it just, it just exudes. So, so they have the aggressive side, but then they have the love side. You know, and they're really strong. Both of those things, they're kind of up on the top. You know, so don't don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to push forward. They're, they're just it's just a terrible culture because there's this. It's like a, it's like about being genuine. Okay, it's 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 genuine to your emotions and be strong. That's some of the element of the culture, and there are a number of positive things that one could say about that, really. So. <laughs> Don't get me wrong when I'm when I'm saying when, when I've been saying some of what I have about about Russia A lot of it is probably a reaction of 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 all the shit that the people living there have had to go through over the over the decades and over the centuries all that shit all that history that affects their culture and and, and the, the way that they react you know we got the same thing here in the United States as far as our way of, of uh, that we react to things, you know, we, we have some things in our culture that are, that are similar to Russia, except we're a lot whinier, way whinier, and we're greedier, and we let ourselves be herded around like cattle by our media, and our society perpetuates the war machines we buy into all of the all of the hype all of the war propaganda nevertheless when I hear people having this attitude like we should have a disdain towards those that are trying to leave a country that is extremely oppressive towards them is kind of messed up now, I understand being skeptical about who may be coming in. You know, look at the statistics. You know, how many more people are coming in that are men versus women? How many are children? How many are, you know, look at the, the age groups. Look, look at all the groupings and, and, and what are the, the statistics that way. And, you know, wondering about that sort of thing, that would be fair. Uh, one would hope that the women and the children would be the primary ones that are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, brought over here. Um, but, you know, I don't know what the statistics are. I've heard people try to say, state, I, I would have looked this up had I have thought this was the direction I was going in the video initially, but I've heard people state that it's a lot more men than anyone, but I never actually looked up the statistic, and I would be curious at this point to look up that statistic. 
And, 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 you know, if it is mainly men, then that does... I mean, a really high percentage. Uh, then that would raise some eyebrows for me. Um, not to the degree that it is a lot of others. But it would certainly raise some eyebrows. I think one of the things that people probably think about the most is maybe their guilty conscience knowing what it is that our country does in the Middle East. We know that there are going to be some people who are going to be really pissed at us. There may be some people who lost a number of family members because of the United States government's uh, actions and what we made the military do. If they have nothing else to live for. Yeah, there's, there's a chance there might be some people that, that, that want to do bad things to us based off of just that. That's why I think we should get the fuck out of, out of any of those countries. We, we have no business being in those countries. We, we, again, we don't know how their culture works. We can try to analyze things from our our perspective, but and and, and tr you know we can we can get some sociologists to come in there that know about their culture, that you know try to have talks, but that's 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 just crap. I mean, we can barely handle when the cultures are very close to our own. We can barely handle that. We can sometimes barely handle our stuff in our own fucking country. But we're gonna, we're gonna think that we can d use some war machine to, uh, uh, essentially a war machine, to force some country to be more like us by force? You know, uh, my view is, let those countries be what they are, let the people who want to get out of there, let those people be able to escape. Let there be a place for people to come to, to try to start a new life. It would seem to me that uh, we should, under the radar, not to be pushed out by media constantly, would be to have uh, some more concerns over North Korea. I think that's a much more of a threat than uh, Islam to the United States. Now, when it comes to things that the United States could do to possibly help Europe in some way, you know, if there's a known thing, Europe is saying, yes, please, we would like this, please. We need help, and, and we can help them? Let's, let's do everything we can. I guess the biggest lesson right now for humanity is that any kind of ideology can be very bad. Has the high, high, high potential to be very bad. We need to learn how to not be as ideological. Maybe that's something humans can't do. Maybe we're just not capable of it. Just wanted to add my reasoning for fearing Russia is because the United States could easily become like Russia. Very, very, very easily. If we allow everything to be so reactionary, and I need, need to include myself in this as well, If we keep being reactionary like this, we could easily go into one direction extreme or another. We could become much, much, much worse than Russia. But I also don't want us to become like China, either. cross between communism and capitalism is fucking horrible. 
horrible. If communism was able to be done, in, in which it's, it's just not going to happen, unless it was on some sort of global level, you know, like the Agenda 21 thing from, uh, from the United Nations. Um, but communism can be, can be something decent if it were ever be able to be implemented, which is very unlikely, next to impossible, easy to corrupt would be a, a form that does not have capitalism in it whatsoever. But as soon as it's all about making money, whether or not the people actually see that money or not, when it all becomes about making money, it's gonna be terrible for the people, fucking horrible. But there's almost, there, so far, there has been no way of really keeping things from becoming all about money instead of shared resources when capitalism starts to collapse and some have some say that it's already collapsing as we speak but I'd say it's it's struggling it's maybe struggling isn't the right word either it's it's showing signs of wear I'll say that but I don't think it's going to really start crumbling until we see the fallout of automation. That's when we will... When we see the fallout of that, that's when the system will start crumbling. Because there's no... There's no... There's, it's like you got this slime you're trying to hold up and you it just keeps going through your fingers and no matter what... Whoa, let's just try to... Now let's get more people underneath. And you don't have any other way thing that you can do because you don't have any tools to, on how to deal with this, and it just all keeps, you know. And if it if it goes down too far, it reaches the ground. Well, you you can't you can't uh, recover it. It's done. And once that occurs, that's when uh, we could actually see a system of government work that hasn't worked in the past because of just the history of what has happened with capitalism. So until then, you know, let's enjoy what we have. Let's make the best of this system while we have it. Because we're not always going to have it. We're not going to be able to be greedy like we currently are. We're not going to... That's not going to be a, a virtue anymore in the future. So, it's not to say that you can't enjoy anything, that you can't have a good time, that you can't spend time with your friends, that you don't have any sort of freedoms. But things will certainly be different. People will have to find, it will have to find a different way of people feeling like they belong to something. I mean, that's, that's this human need. We, 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 we have a need to feel like we belong to something. To something larger. And that's one of those things you can say, well, well we need to get past that. Well, that, that's never going to happen. There are individuals who, who uh, are perfectly fine with being total, total, like, I don't know, loners. People who have no desire to feel like they're part of something larger. There will be individuals like that, of course. And more of those kinds of people would emerge if we cram too much of that sort of tribalism down everyone's throats. So, it's probably best to have a system that only has a few people you know, just in the way things form naturally, only has a small handful of, of percentage-wise, of those who want to completely be, you know, the, the loners, the ones that don't want to be a part of anything. And I'm not trying to say that's the definition of a loner, either. So, something I want to see more of is how people, let's say from the UK, imitate 
a typical American attitude and accent. Just, like, the stereotypes. I, I want to know what their stereotypes are of uh, those in the United States. I don't- I try not to say Americans, because... I, 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 I think it's- just- just the fact that- that- that's the phrase someone is supposed to say, and- and-, and here in this country, we d devised that- that, you know, to- to state that as the United States. Oh, it's America. I mean, that's just- it- it shows some of the minds that we have here. We are- we are arrogant. We are arrogant, and when we when you compare us to a, a number of other countries, we are pretty fucking privileged. All of us, even some of the ones who are who are not dealing with very good uh, living situations. Um, you put you put that in contrast to countries where that. The, those that are the struggling the most here are what the the majority of people are dealing with in other countries um, often with no way out there's there's no possible way out you know there's there's not going to be a chance that some rich person is going to come by and help you with something right so we are very privileged in this country in contrast to a number of other countries. And I think that's a fair use of the word privileged. And let me reiterate too, I am not trying to say that people aren't seeing some really, really hard times here because there are a lot of people who are. Homelessness seems to be something I'm seeing more of. I'm not going to make the absolute statement the this the, it's the, it's going up cry uh, 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 homelessness is going up well I, I don't know that for sure but the visual signs of it certainly have been going up if our country starts to really start heading downhill um, then no we, we we won't be such a privileged country if the United States starts getting boycotted for whatever reason um, that could hurt us quite a bit too. Something I want to mention that I've mentioned before is it can take decades and decades for a country to progress forward, to get past things that have been oppressive, actually been oppressive, genuinely oppressive. Not the new, uh, Hi, I'm a college student, and I'm going to declare that these things are oppressive. No, not that kind of oppressive. I mean truly oppressive. When it's taken so many decades to do this, it could be less than a year for all of that progress to go down the toilet. Now, our society isn't going to just instantly go down the toilet and be like what it was before we had those... Uh, all those changes. All those things we progressed in. It's not going to say that suddenly society is going to just magically, uh, oh, well, let's go into a time machine. And it's, it's not like that. There will always be open-minded, caring, loving people throughout history in any culture, anywhere. There will always be people who will put, they may even put others before them, people who are selfless, people who care very much about humanity, people who would die for someone they they never even met. There will always be people like that in every culture, anywhere. Humans can be very, very compassionate. We can also obviously be very, very nasty. And there will always be nasty people in whatever culture, anywhere, every culture. There will always be nasty people. There will always be foul people. There will always be people who just don't give a shit about others. So if we do start heading downhill in a big way, especially on a social level, if we do really start heading downhill, we need to know that there will always be pockets of good people. There will always be pockets of goodness. 
everywhere. Anywhere you go. Anywhere that you're dealing with people. There will always be pockets of goodness, and I've said this many times. And, you know, to, to do the opposite side of this, there will always be pockets of shit. And sometimes it can seem like we're in a sea of shit. You'll have these pockets of goodness. To coin a kind of cheesy phrase is, I hope the human spirit will persevere. It seems like we usually do. We have to keep hope. The desire to scapegoat, straw man, or put all of the blame on one group of people is huge right now. It's huge. It's huge. I guess I don't know what more to say, so thanks for watching.